let's check this shit out. <laughs> Holy shit. So it said there's secrets, so we gotta look out for secrets. Yeah, I wanna do something. Oh my god, this thing is huge! It's like a garden out here. These red cactus. Oh no, the hedges. Bro, this thing is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Let's start off on this floor and we'll work our way up. Yo! Akita, creator of Ultra Kill. What is up, my boy? Hey, oh, shit. Hey, oh, wait. You can read something here. Hey, uh, welcome to the developer museum. I'm Kahita Hakita, the lead developer of the game. I started off working on the game mostly by myself, but over time, the game has grown a lot, and I've gotten so many wonderful people helping me out over the years. So here they all are. This museum, mostly created by... I'm just going to say wizard, because it looks like that's what he's trying to make it say with the the V's there with just touch-ups writing in additional Easter eggs by me you can find him in the restroom down the hall to the left take a look around the first floor is for all the people who have helped out with the game its development and the second floor is all kinds of other neat development related things like cut content and early versions of stuff there's also plenty Easter eggs hidden around the museum most developers will have a book like this in front of them in which you can read details of how they helped in the creation of this game. Here's mine. All right. Creator of Ultra Kill, I started development on this game on February 1st, 2018. At the time, it was just me with Flying Dog. Oh, I think I remember seeing that gamer tag, uh, Flying Dog, in one of his old, like, game, um, what do you want to call it? Where he, like, is walking through the game and talking about it live with, a. Uh, his guys. And S Tawny making a occlusion 3D model. While the development team has changed and grown since then, I still do the majority of the work myself. Just closer to like 60% of it now, rather than the old 99%. My contributions include all direction game design, sound design, story and animation, all level. Okay. Thank you for playing and hopefully enjoying Ultra Kill. It's insane to me that a passion project I started just based on what I thought was fun in games has grown to be such a massive success. I've met so many amazing people thanks to this game, and the community that has grown around it has been a source of much joy and plenty of anguish <laughs> in my life. It's a rare gift to be able to not only create a work like this, full creative control, but also to be able to make it living off my own art without having to compromise on my vision. Yeah, that is really cool. That's like the fucking dream right there. And it's all thanks to New Blood. All the developers here in this museum, and most importantly, to you. Well, Hakita, you did it. And guess what? He ain't even done yet, and we already think the game's awesome. So holy shit. So which way should we go first? The nerd room or the art room? Wait, I think there's another room back here. Oh shit, there's like a map. Okay, how about this? Let's just work our way from the left, and we'll just work our way around. Throw Hakita in the trash can. Where did I even put him? Oh, come here, my dude. Oh, wow, it actually talks? Where is the trash can? Oh, here it is. It just fucking blows up. Okay. God damn. Francis joined the team in 2021 around the start of the Wrath Layers development when he was picked up as a general artist for New Blood thanks to his incredible Ultra Kill fan art. That's pretty cool. They picked him up just strictly off of his fan art. I simply... I'm just going to, like, read this part up top. I just pointed at the screen as if you guys can see what I'm pointing. <laughs> I'm going to, like, read up the little paragraph at the top and then read what they say at the bottom. I simply wouldn't be here without this game, and I'm so happy it's Ultra Kill. Thank you, Hakita, the rest of the dev team, and everyone in New Blood for being such great people who also, who always support what I do. Special thanks to my best friend, 
who urged me to pursue what I truly love. Being a part of this team has been a dream come true. Here's to the greatest project. Oh, sh Wait, I'm going to throw this guy in the trash can, too, and see what it does. Slam dunk! <laughs> it does the same thing. <laughs> Who's this guy? Sam joined in mid-2019, early into the Limbo Layer's development, and is responsible for modeling most of the enemies in Act 1, including V1, V2, and Gabriel. His last modeling work for the game was the Sisvian Insurrectionist in early 2021, and he has mostly moved on to different projects since then, though he still occasionally helps out with feedback and modeling. That's pretty cool. It just says, no idea, ask Akita. fighting a losing battle. Oh. Throw every... Okay, throw every plushie in there? Okay, fuck it. I mean, I already threw two of them in there. Might as well, right? Come here, boy. Watch it just, like, blow up this whole freaking building. That'd be hilarious. Jericho joined the team in 2019, shortly before the original Prelude demo's release. He's responsible for many of the game's character design and most of its weapon design, as well as all the level textures for Layer 2-4, and some textures for the Wrath Layer. That's cool. Hi, thank you to the rest of the dev team and you guys for enjoying what we create. I've met many wonderful people through Ultra Kill's development and hope to continue doing so. Shout out to... Spig, I think? I don't know how to pronounce that gamertag. And... Luboid. Wholesome, wholesome. These are all very wholesome. Big Rock joined the team in early 2019 during the Prelude's development. He was the first concept artist for the game and responsible for the design of many of the game's bosses, such as the game's first ever creator, I mean, first ever character design, the Sword Machine. That's pretty cool. When Akita asked me to design a boss for his game, I had no idea that Ultra Kill would become this big. To see so many people draw fan art of the characters I've designed is both intimidating as it is inspiring me to continue trying and grow as an artist. I hope my work inspires someone to pick up a pencil as well. Well, you're killing it, my friend. You're killing it. Absolutely killing it. Maximilian joined the team in 2018, early in the game's development. He's responsible for the weapon icons used in the UI. The game over skull animation has well as the game's logo. That's cool. I'm proud to have played a small role in creating Ultra Kill and grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this game. Thank you for having me and thank you to all the players for your support. Oh wait, I forgot to throw these ones in the trash. Throw them in the trash. You know what it reminds me of jumping toward this thing like that? The freaking that ultra kill meme that got made of mean of a uh, V1 dunking ultra ballin I think it's called. He ball. All right, now let's this. We'll save this guy for last. I don't wonder why they don't have a picture for this one. Tony Seagal joined the team right around the start of development in early 2018. We had previously worked together on a few small projects, including a non-cancelled stealth game called... A non-cancelled? Oh, now cancelled, my mistake. Game called Untraceable, which is the origin of Thinking Man statue that eventually became Cerberus. Oh, wow, that's cool. Alongside that, he modeled many of the early character models for Ultra Kill until leaving the project in mid-2019. He also made the original filth models animations, and though those have since been replaced, something Wick still uses one of them, making that the original animation in the game that I haven't made myself. The only animation in the game I haven't made myself. That's cool. So, you're, so that's why they don't have a picture. They're responsible for fucking something wicked. It'd probably scare us. Cerberus is like you versus the guy she told you not to worry about. Find the cat. Okay. I have that 
that as my screensaver now. Victoria joined the team in early 2020, late into the limbo layers onward. She's been responsible for all 3D models in the game, with the only exception of the Sisvian Insurrectionist. She also handles the progress programming of all shaders and almost all graphical systems and optimizations. Waste no time to fear. Take the leap and embrace the person you want to be. You're not alone, so live your authentic self and always enjoy the journey. So that's why this person's got the fucking biggest one. They're the coder, the programmer. Oh, sorry. We enjoy your work, but you're going in the trash. Did I say you can stop playing music? All right, so we checked out that one. Big Dave. Let's go to the nerd room first, actually. Oh, shit. Quality assurance lead, quality assurance, senior quality assurance, technical quality assurance. Oh man, it's this guy. Is this the cat you're talking about? Additional programmer, additional programmer, additional program. Okay, these are all programmers. Ben, aka Zombie, is New Blood's resident programmer, programming wizard. He hopes around from project project fixing tricking issues and giving general programming advice if there's a problem he knows the solution although most of his work on ultra kill is in the form of helping other programmers he has himself also programming some of the systems in the game such as the controller support and the auto aim support hey this guy made it possible for me to play on controllers so shout out ben let's go ben's my boy hey hacky dad can we say fuck in the game <laughs> jesus that's what's up, Ben. All right. Lucas is another new blood programmer, mostly working on his own game, but occasionally jumping in to help with Ultra Kill. When needed, his con contributions have been mostly optimization related, helping make the game run better, as well as creating development tools that allow for easier pre level optimization. Tell you what. Ultra Kill definitely is one of the smoothest running games I've ever played, especially like against some of these AAA games like Apex Legends and Call of Duty. Like you play Apex Legends, the Battle Royale, it is the smoothest Battle Royale, but even whenever I go from playing Ultra Kill to playing Apex Legends, Ultra Kill just feels so much smoother and like just better. If Apex Legends had Ultra Kill type movement, that would be fucking insane. You can play it on a potato. That'd be an interesting project to try. Many thanks to everyone here, including you, the one reading this. It's always been my dream to work on video games, but I never thought I'd be good enough to do it professionally. I dropped out of high school early due to anxiety, and I really felt like I was throwing my life away. But I never gave up, and I never will. Whoever you are out there, never lose hope, and always know that there's no shame in being yourself and doing the things you love so long as nobody gets hurt. You're more than your label, and you're worth more than your credentials. Enjoy the little moments, embrace what makes you happy, and be the best person you can be. That is quite inspirational there, my friend Lucas. Oh, okay. Cabal Crow was one of the first hardcore Ultra Kill fans who helped spark the game's speedrunning scene. He also helped out a lot with figuring out bugs before the game got a QA team, and recorded most of the trailer footage in early trailers. His programming contributions came in the form of the climb step system he created in 2020, which allows players to smoothly step onto and over small ledges and obstacles. You know what they say, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. <laughs> So he's responsible for the fucking, for this shit. Sliding upstairs. He's responsible for that movement. And that's like... I'm no programmer, but I'm sure that that's hard as shit to program. Hectic was brought into the team temporarily in... 2020 thanks to their experience and skill making mods for ultra kill to overhaul the that's really cool that they just like grab people from the community that they find are talented at things overhaul the style system to include staleness as well as other related quality of life features the 
harvest is lacking this year. <laughs> He's a fucking tomato and it says the harvest is lacking this year. He's like the tomato we went fishing with. Here, you rest here. He just screamed! Sorry, sorry, sorry! Alright. Oh my god, okay. Hello. Cameron, Kyla, Tucker, and Scott. The New Blood QA team. Okay. Are responsible for making sure the game runs properly and without any major bugs. It's thanks to them that Ultra Kill looks and feels like a functioning game despite being a mess of duct tape, <laughs> spaghetti, glue, and players underneath. Prior to Ultra Kill. Yeah, prior to Ultra Kill joining the New Blood catalog, I had to do QA myself, and even though small amounts of budgeting makes me question how these people manage to stay sane. Well, relatively sane. In the immortal words of the great Hungarian Center for... Okay, I do not know how to fucking say that, so uh, if anybody does, feel free to uh, tell us what that says in the chat. That'd be really nice. First we'll take it. Surprisingly motivational. Yep. If Apex had the ultra movement, everyone would be flying. Yeah, that's true. People would be fucking tap strafing through the moon. It'd be brutal. Of all the scars on my physique, this one will always remain a favored one. For that cursed door to the ancient spawner arm split. Accidental spawner arm split. It's been a great time regardless. Sometimes video games can be cool as hell. Hopefully we can get more of them. True. Being able to help others bring to fruition a strong creative version, strong creative vision like Hakita's, has been an absolute honor and an unforgettable experience. I will remain forever grateful for the opportunity and I look forward to whatever might come next. That's cool. So they're responsible for like finding the bugs and stuff like that, which is very fucking important. I think more AAA game companies need a bigger QA team, it sounds like. <laughs> Wait, this is the entrance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we need to go in here. And this room is called... Big Dave. Oh, shit! Holy crap, man. This place is, like, massive. CEO of New Blood Interactive. Yo, why is he dressed like a soldier? Wait, what was that? You guys saw that, right? I'll be right back, Dave. Don't worry. Hey, a volleyball or a beach ball. All right, let's go see what Dave's going on with Dave. Rocket race? What? Let's see what this is. Fuck it. Wait, race? Oh, shit. Okay, I see. Shit! No! Oh my god, this is fucking really hard. Keep spawning? No! Ah, oh, shit! Uh oh. Where'd they go? I think they're over there. There it is. There's gotta be more, right? I had to have missed one. Shit, I don't know which one I missed. Let 
Maybe it's like down low. There it is. Oh, that's a dog shit time. That's cool that they have that shit. All right, Mr. Dave, shout out to you for supporting the Ultra Kill development team. Much appreciated. Restroom. Music creator. Guest composer. Guest composer. Artist. Writer. Additional music. Talk room. Voice of Minos Prime. Voice of Sisyphus Prime. Voice of Gabriel. Voice of Owl. <laughs> yeah. Voice of Mysterious Druid Knight. Yo, this is a cool looking little plushie. I originally met with Mandalore in late 2019 after his review of Dusk, when I DM'd him to ask him to elaborate on some criticisms he had mentioned of retro shooters at the time Ultra Kill has just a small no-name project, but he still took the time to not only write an in-depth reply, but also to reply Ultra Kill's demo in, I mean also, wait, also to play Ultra Kill's demo and give very useful feedback for it. As thanks for his help, I wanted to make a little joke boss fight featuring him and Joy based on some in-jokes from their mis Mysteria the Druid streams. That's interesting. We might have to check out one of those streams one day. That'd be cool. If we can even find it. I'm sure it's like... Wait, when did this... Uh, they don't say whenever he joined, but I'm sure it's down in the freaking archives of YouTube somewhere. Using clips from his eye review as his voice lines, once he saw the boss, he offered to not only re-record those lines, but also record completely new ones with joy, which they improve together, improvise together. Visit me in the tombs with piped in music. How classically, thanks for playing. How classy, thanks for playing. Here for a good time, not a bad time, hopefully. That's kind of cool. And now for the voice of Minos Prime. As with most people, I mainly knew Stefan as the voice of... Okay. Celeb from Blood. But hearing him... Dusk made it clear... Okay, so he found him from another game. Dusk. I haven't played Dusk. That's another New Blood Interactive game. I know that, but I've never even played it. Clear that he still had the skills, so even before joining New Blood, I had already decided that I wanted Stefan to voice someone in Ultra Kill. When the time came to choose the voice for Minos Prime, the choice was obvious. Stefan was lovely to work with. His voice lines led to so much richness and character to Minos that I really want, can't imagine him any other way. That's very true, man. Imagine if Minos Prime had like some squeaky ass voice. Nobody would have took him seriously. Everybody would have been like, okay, who's this guy? And now for the boy we slayed the day, the voice of Sisyphus Prime. I approached the boy in early 2023 after hearing his fantastic performance as the narrator in Disco Elysium and feeling that his deep textural voice would be the perfect fit for King Sisyphus. He was a pleasure to work with and, he'll, and he helped really make Sisyphus stand out as his own unique character. Nice, nice. And now for Gabriel. And I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more voice lines from this guy. I'm actually subbed to this guy's YouTube channel. I found him. Gianni originally approached me offering his talents in late 2019, but we didn't start working together until mid-late 2020, a bit less than a week before the game came out in early access. Despite the short time frame, he knocked it out of the park, not only defining the solidifying Gabriel's character, and voice, but also delivering fantastic performances that managed to capture both his visceral intensity and this. Yeah, that's very true. Like, he's really. That's one thing I loved about Gabriel and what made his, like, like before you fight him, his little dialogue he would give is, like, the intensity and the emotion you could hear in his voice. That shit, like, 
It's one of the only fights in the int in all of gaming that I've experienced that has actually given me goosebumps before the fights. Like, holy crap. In Aesthetics of Hate, the second time you run into him. That little dialogue he gives before that, I'll never forget that. That managed to capture both his visceral intensity and the subtler nuances of his internal world. Since then, he's only gotten better, and I'm very glad to work with someone who understands both my vision of the story and the character of Gabrielle so well that he was able to improvise all the taunts in Gabriel's first fight. Holy shit! He's a joy to work with in the dream of any over-ambitious indie developer like me. Can you write in that? I said, thank you to... <laughs> I said, thank you to gay people. That's the fucking... He's a goddamn comedian. Gabe is gonna be mad if you throw him. Okay, let's try it. Let's throw away the plushie and see if Gabriel comes and smites me down. the next time I run into Gabriel, he's just gonna dunk on me. Okay, so I read all of them in here. I read all of them in here. Did I read all these ones? Restroom? No, I did not. These are the music guys. Alright, let's start here. Guest composer. Oh, shit! This is the guy that made the Cybergrind music. In early 2020, after Big Rock, who is a fan of his... Notice he followed the Ultra Kill Twitter account and asked if he'd be interested in collaborating. Originally, I didn't have anything specific in mind, but once he sent me a sound step, a sound test clip that showed the kind of sound he'd go for, it immediately struck me as the perfect music for an endless survival mode. That sound test eventually through months of iteration became the cyber grinds background music in a way you can thank him for causing the creation of that mode that's pretty cool so he was inspired to make the cyber grind just based off of the music that this guy made for him playing the alpha demo got me incredibly inspired getting to the channel that back into the game was a bit surreal big thanks to hakita and big rock for reaching out that's really cool actually that his music alone inspired the cyber grind because the cyber grind is pretty damn fun another guest composer Oh shit! AKA Master Boot recorded. Master Boot Record approached me in mid late 2020, and I was already a fan of his music as Kaigen as Church, so I was very happy to have him on board as a guest composer. The timing was perfect as well, since his style fits so well with the aesthetics of aesthetics of the Heresy Lair, and he created the first battle theme for P2 titled. Tenbri Rosso Sangu. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Forgive me if I'm not. But we also collaborated on the connected ARG with him doing most of the heavy lifting since he had already done similar things with his projects. Though resolution, high imagination, praise the code. It's a little ninja plushie. Oh my god. That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Praise the code. He's a fucking comedian too. I do not... Oh, okay, okay. This was picked up temporarily in late 2020 to create this museum. Thanks to his experience and skills with an early version of the Ultra Kill level editor, he designed the level and made all the models and textures for it. If you were wondering why it's the best looking level in the game, here's the reason. <laughs> oh my god. Ultra Kill is special to me in a way that is just a book's length worth of words. Working on this game is something I will hold close to my heart always. I hope I can continue to work with the wonderful people at New Blood and the interactions I've had with the community helped bring me to be a part of this team. Sometimes I wonder where the... Sometimes I wonder where the dominoes fall behind and where it will end. 
that precedes this, a good YouTube video, the Ultra Kill Rip and Tear really can change your life. A good YouTube video, the Ultra Kill Rip and Tear really can change your life. So this guy found it through a YouTube video, so that's cool. Found the game through a YouTube video. Jacob joined the team in early 2020 to help write the prose and dialogue of the game after I met him through a mutual game developer friend. He's mostly responsible for the writing in the various books you find around the levels, as well as Gabrielle's dialogue and the... So this guy helped me make my lore videos. Let's go. For the intermission cutscenes in Act 1, I came up with the general outline of what I wanted each text to have, and he would write it with some tweaks and edits from, from me afterwards. While in Act 2, Poe's writing was more of an even 50-50 split between us. Most of those great poetic phrases and impactful lines that have become iconic in the Ultra Kill community are those of his skills with the English language. Shout out this boy for the dialogue. Another artist. So what? Some of their biggest contributions include... Are you in or are you skin? What? Wait. Who the fuck is that? Jacketo? Jacketo? I think that's how you say it. Who is that? Wait, why is this one empty? Additional credits, additional music. Oh, okay. Okay, these are just kind of like a review of what of just other people that have helped. Telling you in a previous game, Traceable was unfun. <laughs> and these are like special thanks right here. That's a big ass door. Oh, it's the dude who crashes the game. <laughs> okay, the guy that's in the cage on top of the tower. It's a little garden. What the fuck? Oh, what? There's a new wall there. That's a big ass Maurice. Holy shit. Yo, what is this? What the fuck? It's a little laser gun? What the hell? Is this like a gun that got cancelled? Find my fire, hide the floor beam, secondary fire, place remove beam drone. Designed by Francis with model with Victoria, a sixth weapon which was cut early into its creation due to running into many design issues and to avoid arsenal blow and weapon roll overlap. Okay. So this is just a cancelled weapon. That's kind of cool that they put it in here for us to see it. What the hell? Yo, you can... Holy shit! You know what this reminds me of is the BFG from Doom. cut super weapon that was intended to work via a meter that got filled by killing enemies. It was made around early 2019, shortly after the addition of the shotgun, with the intent of it being introduced much later in the game. Are these dual? Oh, I can't pick these ones up. The first weapon to be based on concept art, drawn, designed by... Okay, is the... 
Okay, so these are just like telling us about the model design for the weapons. Can I can sort them, which was one of the primary reasons we wanted to redo the old weapon models. Oh, okay, these are the old weapon models, I think. The new ones. Yeah, see, here's the old one. The old one here on the left, and this is the new one. You know, that's interesting that I just found this because whenever I very first discovered Ultra Kill, I was looking at videos and I would see the difference here and I would think, is there a variant of the minigun I haven't unlocked yet? But this thing is just revealed to me and through playing the game and discovering more about it that this is just the old model. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you can see how the one on the right has more detail. As with the revolver, the shotgun was made by Flying Dog without concept art and later remade by Victoria, keeping it okay, faithful to the original design while updating it to fit the same game's new visual style better. The new version. Okay, so these are just all like art style reviews. Holy shit, imagine if I had a pistol that big. That's a big dick pistol. Boy, I swear to God. These are all the enemies. Oh, okay. These are... Whoa, look. This one's like robotic. Way more robotic anyways, I should say. What the hell? Holy shit, man. The models look way different originally. Maurice! The malicious face called sp wait, called spider in the game files. Oh, okay. Thanks to your transparent spider leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen those whenever I was in the fucking the free roam area. Imagine the coins. Oh, yeah. It was actually the first enemy to be designed for the game, although iconic now. Its design was supposed to be quite different originally, as I wanted a more stark and simplified look. But Flying Dog, only modeling as a hobby, had a hard time pulling it off without any concept art to aid him. So we eventually compromised with this version. Definitely serves its purpose. It's fucking malicious. I probably die more to these things and mind flares than anything else in this game. The Sword Machine. Sword Machine was the first enemy to be designed by a concept artist, and the difference really shows. Big Rock's wonderful blame. Inspired design is rich with implied character that later becomes explicit when I wrote the data entry for it. Can I have your yellow arm, sir, so I can fucking swing a big ass sword? That'd be badass. How cool would it be if we ran into a boss that was like a big one of these and he had like four arms or some shit like some general grievous style and we had to fight him with four swords that would be insane and you had to like parry the swords before they hit you and shit like that all right i haven't really explored up there <laughs> Ultra Kill, a development history. Yo, there's a movie theater. Wait, who the hell's sitting down here? Oh, hey! It's all my friends. Alright, here we go. Let's go sit with the boys. Okay, I will. I'll throw every plushie away after I'm done exploring the museum. Don't worry. It 
it's crazy how long the de like developing a game takes man so much effort has to go into it it's very admirable for somebody to do something like that all on their own This is like all the weapons and everything. Yo, is that something wicked? Oh shit. The kids gotta go into the garbage cans. Oh wow, freaking level textures. Holy shit, that one was really significant change. Okay, so this is whenever it got to early access. There's the Lust Player, boys. Oh, shit. Yeah, see, look, that's the old model nail gun. Oh, now it's gone. Minecraft. Good little spawner arms. And now we're getting to more recent times, it looks like. Fuck those things. That's one of my favorite levels right there. Oh shit. Hey, hey, that's where we are. Finn. All right, we got one more movie to watch. I think anyways, if this thing even does another movie. Oh shit, it's a fish tank. Yo, those are all... There's the fucking frog. There's the dope fish. The metal fish? These are just all the fish we caught. Nice, okay. So all these plushies have to go in the trash. Like, every plushie on the level or just every plushie in this room? That was changing like that. What the fuck? Oh my... Oh, what the fuck is that? Yo, what the fuck? It's fucking Gabriel. You weren't joking. Gabriel is pissed. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many of them. Wait, where are they all going? Oh my god, they are after me. Come on, boy, get some. Wait, shit. Oh! Wait, what? Question mark. Oh, it's this gun. Come on, bitch! Use the new and improved laser cannon. Get wrecked, bitch. <laughs> was that supposed to- What the hell? Oh. Is that what was supposed to happen? Game, that was fucking funny. I thought something wicked was gonna come back. Was gonna come after me. Hey, it's Arm Boy. We saw him in the Heresy level. Lear. The kitty cat. You're the goodest of good boys. You come with me, my friend. What the hell? Oh, hey, he's following me. You're my friend now. We're getting tacos 